Peace and freedom and grace be with you. My name is John Clifton and welcome to Hard Fire. Uh, we've done several programs on tax issues and in particular tax honesty, a concept of, of actually uh, correctly looking at the actual laws and procedures in the tax code and in the tax law of the United States and correcting the IRS and similar entities who are in the opinion of tax honesty people misapplying uh, the tax laws. Uh, we've had a uh, success in penetrating the mainstream uh, with, with various aspects of the message, uh, although different techniques are used. Uh, right now, uh, I heard statistics that there are 60 million non-filers, uh, people who simply do not file based on the belief uh, that they, and I believe is reasonable, that there is not a law that mandates most Americans file uh, and, and pay taxes. Um, there are some segments of the tax honesty movement, though, who believe that there should be a proper, honest, and accurate filing of returns uh, based on uh, some presumptions that are made against people who, um, uh, you know, who are supposedly earning some income and have to rebut those, those false presumptions. One of the champions of this is our guest, who's coming to us by phone. Uh, this approach has been um, championed by Peter Hendrickson, the author of Cracking the Code. And I'd like to welcome Peter uh, right now. Are you there? I'm here, John. Hello, sir. Um, I will start off right now by maybe summarizing what your position is and what it has led to in terms of the reaction of the government. Um, could you explain um, your approach? Uh, I certainly will. My approach um, is actually Congress's approach and the, uh, the framers of the Constitution's approach. Uh, our system of government does not uh, provide for direct taxation of uh, individual American citizens. Uh, in fact, uh, that kind of taxation is explicitly prohibited under the Constitution except by the mechanism of apportionment. Congress has uh, been uh, consistent and, uh, and uh, 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 cooperative with that intention and has set up a structure uh, whereby only uh, uh, excise taxes are applied uh, to the citizens in general. These are taxes that are voluntary in nature. They do not involve direct taxation. Uh, they involve the uh, uh, taxes on the benefit of the exercise of privileges afforded to people by government. And uh, the income tax is one such tax. It is, it is, in fact, not a direct tax. It is an excise. It's a tax on the benefit of the exercise of federal privileges measured by the dollars that result from that exercise. Uh, the, uh, this knowledge is, is now quite widespread in America. Uh, there are thousands and thousands of uh, readers of Cracking the Code, the fascinating truth about taxation in America that are acting on their knowledge and are recovering uh, from both the federal and so far 24 state governments every penny that is withheld from their uh, earnings and every penny paid in by them. Uh, including uh, amounts that are theoretically uh, Social Security and, and Medicare contributions, uh, to the tune of many millions of dollars at this point, uh, uh, about two and a quarter million of which are uh, uh, posted in the form of refund checks, uh, notice of deficiency closing notices, uh, uh, lien releases, levy releases, et cetera, on my website, LostHorizons.com. Uh, at this very moment, and these uh, these refunds, these victories for uh, what really is the enforcement of the rule of law by Americans against their government uh, goes on on a daily basis. In fact, just this, this afternoon, I, I uh, received uh, the latest such uh, victory sent by a happy reader, uh, $17,000 refund uh, of everything that had been withheld from her during the course of the past year, uh, and a release of lien uh, that had been uh, uh, standing against her in connection with uh, five previous years uh, at the same time. Well, I just want to interrupt to bring up the, the point that um, the traditional tactic uh, a lot of individuals in the tax honesty movement have taken has been to uh, not file or to ask for uh, proof from the government. Uh, and there are very various variations of that. Some I personally think are more successful and others very, very less successful than others. Uh, but what tends to happen is an administrative train of paperwork um, begins to be computer generated by the IRS uh, in, in basically in non-response to any any 
non uh, activity by the tax dynasty advocate, then they send them notices and file notices of lien and so forth to compel them ever, ever more progressively through this uh, new paper trail to pay um, so-called taxes due and penalties and other uh, fees. Uh, what your approach does as a practical matter is sort of short circuit that whole administrative train of computer generated notices and creates a different kind of outcome where uh, because you filed a proper or accurate return, uh, the uh, government then submits to you a basically a termination letter saying, here's your money back and uh, we recognize you know, you corrected the uh, false information that we had. That, that's exactly correct, John. You know, really the filing of a return is a part in what amounts to a judicial uh, contest, a, a court procedure, if you will. Uh, it involves the submission of evidence by somebody who asserts that, that income was received by the filer, and then the filers introducing their own testimony uh, into the record by way of a tax return. To not do so is to lose by default. It is to allow the, the testimony of the information return preparer, the information return being a W-2, a K-1, a 1099, et cetera, a document essentially that says income was, was paid to so-and-so, uh, income was received by so-and-so. Uh, again, if that is allowed to stand unchallenged and uncorrected, uh, it will prevail. If it happens to be wrong, it will wrongly prevail, and the individual will uh, simply be held liable for the resulting tax. Um, there absolutely is a tax on income received. If one has received income, one owes the tax, and the tax will be collected. Uh, Congress has provided a mechanism to uh, allow individuals to introduce their own testimony uh, as to their receipts, the legal con uh, the legal. Uh, uh, nature of their receipts into the record and uh, and proceed accordingly. And in fact, not only is is that the case, but it is the law that the filer's testimony in this regard prevails over any other testimony. The the what the statute says in these words is that that filer's testimony shall be received as the amount upon which the tax is to be assessed and collected. Period. There are no ifs, ands, or buts about it. No no uh, qualifiers. It's period. And so. Uh, it, to, to stand mute, which is what non-filing amounts to, is to allow the uh, contrary testimony or the, the uh, opposing testimony, if you will, uh, prevail. Now, it may be that that opposing testimony is correct and, and non-filing you know, has no, no meaningful consequence other than to uh, deny one the opportunity to take advantage of deductions and so forth that might otherwise be available. But, uh, but if, the, if the information is not correct, uh, it is simply to allow money to be taken uh, that, that one doesn't actually owe. And that money will be taken. Uh, many people, you know, uh, uh, engage in non-filing and, and in some cases can go many years uh, uh, without losing any more than what had been withheld from them. And, of course, the system relies very heavily on withholding. Uh, generally speaking, the, the government has your money to begin with. Uh, but let me just contrast that with some statistics. I started off by saying there were 60, actually 63 million non-filers. Uh, my understanding from statistics or the IRS's own numbers is that they only really go after about 2,000 people uh, in terms of serious action, uh, you know, in terms of court and other uh, procedures. The rest, if they do it, anything, it's, it's in the form of, of these civil actions in terms of filing these notices of, uh, you know, of lien or notices of levy. Uh, to collect. Uh, in the case of leaders of the tax honesty movement who, who present the, the correct information to the public and brought, bring more attention to these issues, as you have, their approach, however, has been extremely severe and almost 100 percent sick them, you know, go after them, you know, harass them, beat them up, take them to court, take them back to court. Uh, you've been through uh, the mill with this kind of process, uh, and I wonder if you would like to explain uh, where that is at at this moment. Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, I'm actually involved in, uh, well, I'm being subjected to, to a fourth uh, effort to suppress the, uh, uh, my voice, essentially. Uh, three previous attempts to characterize uh, my book and my activities as the promotion of an abusive tax shelter, which is kind of the uh, catch-all uh, uh, assault mechanism that the IRS typically deploys uh, uh, against uh, people who are revealing information that it doesn't like. Uh, I have uh, defeated uh, the, the, the government on. 
Um, I am now in the course of a fourth uh, version of this. This particular version is, is uh, taking the form of a lawsuit against my wife and I, ostensibly to uh, force us to return refunds, uh, complete refunds made to us for the years 2002 and 2003 uh, under the, uh, the uh, uh, notion that uh, what was refunded actually was a payment of tax and that it was uh, refunded in error. Uh, the government in its, in its uh, complaint actually kind of acknowledges the reality here. They have asked the court in this case to command my wife and I to change the testimony on our 2002 and 2003 tax returns. Uh, number one, obviously a court has no authority to order someone how to testify on a sworn document under any circumstances. Uh, number two, the, this specific remedy being sought reveals the reality of the law. The reason why the government has to ask for that is because if we don't change that uh, testimony, uh, our tax returns stand as the final word as to what is to be uh, assessed and, and collected against. And so there is no tax owing. In fact, the official Department of Treasury certificates of assessment for us or concerning us for those two years show zero as the amounts uh, owed, and quite properly so. Uh, and so the, the, this is really, it's a PR campaign affair. It was predictably launched uh, uh, four days or five days before tax day in 2006. I, it's, it's, I, I always notice that every single year there's a huge deluge of negative tax information about enforcement actions by the IRS during March, uh, particularly March. That seems to be the heaviest month when they do this, and then maybe into trickling into April, and there's all these advertisements on TV for law firms to help people who um, owe money back to the um, IRS, whatever, uh, and then they all just drop and drops out of sight after April 15th. It did its purpose of, uh, of harassing people and, and, and pressuring them into just complying and being conformist. Uh, I, I just wanted to emphasize that point that you, you mentioned. They're, t they're taking your sworn testimony and um, basically saying you should throw it out by uh, recasting uh, your testimony in terms that they would like. Uh, they're, they're asking you to change your testimony. Uh, it, uh, essentially, they're, they're demanding witness tampering. That's exactly right. It's witness tampering. It's subordination of perjury. Uh, it is, it is uh, and more importantly to me, it is revealing of the reality. Without that testimony being changed, they, they have no claim to make. Uh, they're trying to create a, the claim that they're attempting to prosecute at the same, you know, in, in one fell swoop, and it's, and it's uh, it clearly is, is simply an acknowledgement of the reality. Uh, another significant acknowledgement of the reality is during the, the year's time that this uh, suit has been uh, uh, pending through the courts, um, I've posted an additional uh, one and a quarter million dollars worth of refunds uh, received by readers continuously, day, well, every Friday and every Monday uh, uh, during that time without interruption, without cessation. Uh, and I want to talk about the, uh, more about these, these refunds and where people can go to actually see this. Uh, I want to take a, a, a quick break to do a public service announcement for uh, the viewers of this program. I and many other, other recurrent hosts on this program bring to your attention the fact that uh, this program is produced by libertarians, uh, people who believe in freedom, uh, particularly in the New York State area. We are uh, a creature of the New York State Party, uh, the Libertarian Party of New York. And you can go to various places to find our information. Um, you can go to ny.lp.org to get the latest information regarding uh, activity by the um, state party uh, and, and in terms of fostering liberty throughout uh, the country, and beginning with New York State. Uh, we also have a vibrant uh, Manhattan chapter. Um, go to manhattanlp.org to get the information on uh, activity of the uh, Manhattan Libertarian Party. Uh, there's uh, this Queen's Party uh, who meets in Astoria each month, and they are at lpqc.org. And I hope you will afford yourself the opportunity to get more background information about uh, activities uh, that will further uh, the cause of liberty and bringing peace and uh, constitutional rule back to this state and this nation. Uh, I want to go now back to um, Peter Hendrickson. Um, it, it, this is a fascinating point that even in the midst of uh, the fourth cycle of 
very harmful or, or abusive um, government harassment of you uh, in, in denying the truth of your statements and, and you're re relating the truth about what's in the tax law to the public, um, they're continuing to turn out these refunds as if uh, there's, there's no disconnect between their activity to crush you versus their activity to conform with, with the law when people pr uh, produce uh, you know, um, accurate and, um, and proper returns. Uh, that's correct. It's uh, the, the the reality is that the law is what I say it is, and and they are responding properly to it. The uh, the lawsuit is a PR campaign and, and nothing more than that. And and you know it's a it's an onerous and and uh, despicable uh, burden to uh, uh, to be settled on my wife and I, and and uh, and uh, I wish that it weren't so. But uh, it it should not be misunderstood as as being a uh, sincere uh, and, uh, uh, and and you know a good faith affair on the part of the government. Is it any, anything but that? Yeah, and I want we spent a lot of time in terms of different programs talking about your particular situation and uh, your you know popularization of, of this information. Uh, the other aspects of the tax honesty movement have also been. Uh, beset with the same kind of abusive um, activity, uh, whether we're talking about the uh, We the People Foundation, which has been uh, trying to pursue things based on the front door approach, as I, I call it, regarding tax issues. They've gone to the government and through a, a write a petition suit, um, tried to force the government to admit, finally, the correct answers to a lot of these, these issues. Uh, and they've been thwarted, you know, at each step of the um, review process with regard to that. Uh, other leaders of the tax honesty movement, um, whether their theory was bogus or whether their theory was valid, whether they were uh, selling stuff on their website or whether they were selling nothing on their website, uh, have been uh, hit with that charge of abusive uh, tax shelter. Uh, and um, is there a point where you think they're going to stop? Uh, cease and desist with some of the persons you know, in the tax honesty movement and just admit that at least, for example, your, uh, your presentations are accurate. No, I don't, I don't think there's ever going to be a white flag waved that, uh, you know, is a surrender on the part of the system. The system is going to, uh, when I say the system, I mean the beneficiaries of, of ignorance that, uh, that uh, represents the status quo right now. They're, they're going to continue to uh, uh, fight. Uh, the truth as long as they can. Um, they they realize that to make admissions, which is what a surrender would amount to, uh, would be to uh, truly infuriate the American public. It, to 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 stand forth and, and say, you know what? Yes, we we've, we've been scamming you all uh, your entire lives, uh, and uh, you know we're sorry. Uh, you know, have a nice day. Please forget and forgive. Uh, if, Several things would happen. For one thing, the law provides that uh, that anyone can reclaim uh, erroneously collected or paid in amounts uh, three years back. Uh, we would quickly see 120 million Americans uh, demanding back the past three years of income tax withholdings and, and payments. Uh, the, the, the system certainly doesn't want to see that happen. Uh, the other issue, of course, would be, you know, how the American people would express their ire at having been gulled and exploited uh, to this degree for so long. Uh, what I expect will happen is that as knowledge of the truth grows and spreads, and it is spreading at a rapid pace at this point, uh, the, the system will slowly stand down. It will try and move to all alternatives. It will, it will try and move to uh, you know, revenue neutral uh, mechanisms that it believes it might get away with. Uh, for a little while longer, things like the fair tax, which is just as as uh, unviable, non-viable, non, non illegitimate as the improper application of the income tax. The income tax, as the law is written, is perfectly constitutional, perfectly proper. It's just very limited in its application. Uh, I just wanted to, to bring up, though, that uh, it, it's true that, um, it, that there's been a lot of activity against you and other people in the movement, uh, but it, one of the regrettable things I think you admitted in your newsletter uh, was that it was distracting you from other projects, um, one of which uh, you mentioned uh, involves going after the bad guys. Uh, and you didn't specify anything further than that from what I read there, but uh, were you planning on some kind of judicial or other action against certain parties who uh, have been 
you know, forwarding uh, these judicial challenges to you? Not not punitive actions as such, although there certainly are, uh, there would be there would be fertile ground for that kind of thing if anyone cared to undertake it. Now, the, the uh, offensive maneuver or, or, or action plan that I would like to be pursuing right now is simply this. There are two fundamental responses that governments make to educated filings. One is to simply return the, the money, uh, and that is uh, far and away the majority of the cases that's the response. The other, however, has been in the past, although it's migrating a little bit, and I'll get to that in just a second, but in the past there has been a tendency to gratuitously and unilaterally attempt to characterize educated filings as being frivolous. Um, and the reason for this is because there is a doctrine within the, uh, the IRS Office of Chief Counsel that provides the return that actually qualifies as a frivolous return. That's a statutorily defined term, by the way. It doesn't mean a silly return or a, a wrong return. It means a return that meets certain statutory requirements. Uh, can be treated as non-filed, as not filed at all. And the reason for that is because the, the only means by which the system can avoid the consequences of an educated filing, that consequence being returning the money, is to not process the return at all. If they can characterize a return as frivolous, they are permitted to not process the return. Now, lately, that response has been migrating, that balking, bulky response has been migrating to a we lost your return approach. I think that that's because the operatives in the IRS and other tax agencies are coming to realize that it's a felony to uh, deliberately mischaracterize, unilaterally try and mischaracterize a return as something that it isn't and thwart the intentions of the filer. So it's, it's safer to, you know, conveniently lose the return that made it into the office than to, than to try and say something uh, that isn't true about it. But all those re returns that, that have been characterized as frivolous, there is a mechanism in the law called a writ of mandamus by which a, a court can be, uh, a court's authority can be sought to command an executive agency to do what the law requires of it. And the law requires of these agencies to process these returns. Right. So that's the, that's the action that is, uh, that is uh, that I'm currently being prevented from, uh, from uh, proceeding with. Mm. I, I want to bring up that other people in the honesty movement use other techniques such as, um, I mean, when, when it comes to other um, documents that they've submitted, you know, in terms of letters, affidavits, and so forth, they, uh, go ahead and get um, uh, the, everything notarized, of course, and, you know, uh, so that it has some standing as a sworn statement in, in, in court, or they get a notary to witness a dishonor of information uh, that's been submitted to IRS, uh, or they file the information at the um, county recorder uh, such that it's on, it's part of the certified public record, you know, so that there uh, can't be any disputing that the if evidence exists and is admissible if it comes to a point of uh, a courtroom kind of situation uh, or confrontation with the IRS. Um, I, and I, you, you put much of your, your, your newsletter, uh, which is published each two weeks or so, uh, each week or two weeks, I forget how often, uh, it is um, devoted to talking about the updates in your situation, updates on the number of people who, who uh, are filing um, the, the proper returns and getting refunds, uh, and also um, your attempts to correct, you believe, are deviant paths or, or, or dead-end situations with the tax honesty movement. Uh, do you think there's any particular issue uh, that, that, uh, that should be not pursued by the tax honesty movement um, versus your approach? Yes, particularly non-filing, and, I, I, and, and in part that's because it is so prevalent. Uh, as you say, uh, uh, at least 30 million and possibly as many as 63 or 64 million Americans uh, engage in non-filing of one kind or another. And the problem with that is it is, a, it is a, a stepping off the field of battle, so to speak. It is an abandonment of uh, one's views. A person who, who doesn't file is, is, will shout from the rooftops that they don't owe the tax, that they didn't engage in an activity subject to the tax, but they simply cannot bring themselves to sign a piece of paper that actually says that. And, and I find that uh, kind of mystifying to begin with, uh, but it, it is also extremely counterproductive. It simply allows the government to keep the money and, and make use of the money and command the resources just as it wishes, and, and, it, and it also removes from the contest, it removes from, from the field uh, any challenge to that protocol, any challenge to that process. 
Okay. I, I want to bring up the, in defense of the non-filers uh, situation, uh, just to present that other side of the Odyssey movement, is they don't want to sign anything that gives them, that, that creates further false presumptions because of the way the standard forms are constructed. They, uh, they, they, they realize that those forms do not necessarily have legal standing, yet at the same time, if they sign off to them, you know, it, it is part of the testimony that they're submitting. Uh, so they don't want to submit something that could be construed as a matter of administrative or equitable issues, you know, this, uh, something that could establish a, pres a false presumption regarding their liability or their status, you know, uh, relating to um, uh, being considered a taxpayer versus a non-taxpayer. Sure. Uh, I, I understand and sympathize with that, with that concern, John. It's, it's, I think it's, it's, it's misapprehended, um, though. The the a return the, the the effect of a return is is directly based and exclusively based on the content of the return. There is no hidden language uh, that says anyone who, who files one of these documents, regardless of what it says on it, uh, is now in our clutches, uh, is is now uh, you know deemed a taxpayer or is now deemed a U.S. individual, which is a frankly not a defined term at all. Uh, it, 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 that that is the reason that, that be behind that that fear that you're that you're. Um, uh, right. What I'm, again, I'm saying it, it it may not create a legal case, but it might create an equitable case. If if, you, if a form says you're a taxpayer, uh, you're a U.S. citizen, and you sign it, uh, even though your your content you supplied corrects some information, the uncorrected information, but, to but, me seems to be, uh, you know. Uh, providing um, uh, fire to your enemy. Uh, but I'll let you have the last word because we're uh, down to about a, uh, under a minute. Okay, well, and, and, and my last word on this will be, it doesn't actually say anywhere that filling out this form or signing this form, whatever, uh, makes one a U.S. citizen or can only be done by a U.S. citizen or makes one a taxpayer or can only be done by a taxpayer. In fact, the, the law that, uh, that Congress has laid down says that it actually says any person, not any taxpayer, and it says that, that uh, that what that person says on that form is the bottom line, is the last word on the, the subject of, of their having engaged in a taxable activity. Any human being on the planet is capable of, have, of engaging in a federally taxable activity. It's not citizenship-based. It's not residency-based. It is, it is based on the nature of the activity itself. Um, Okay, I, I'm sorry, we, we have to uh, wrap here. I, this is uh, amazing stuff, how fast we can go through the, these issues and look like we're even just getting started, you know, uh, and the show's already over. I, we hope to have you back yet again to go over these issues, and I hope the public and our viewers will be back for another episode of Hard Fire. Thank you, John. Live free or die.